here we are and we are going to apply all that stuff we learned about transformations back on February 18th to radical functions. In particular, at least at the beginning here, to square root functions. And this is the basic function y equals the square root of x. Okay. Um, and then it's being transformed here. So I I drew this. I mean, obviously the pin, the print is from the computer, but um, I got inspired and I just spent hours working on this. So you better like it. And what this does is it's kind of a spread out version of every single transformation we talked about back in February, which now seems like ancient history. Notice that the parts outside, and, and I want to color them yellow. <laughs> You've got the parts outside the function and you've got the parts inside the function. Is everything OK? Can you hear me OK? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, OK. Um, and here's yes. Well, I already said that. Here's a graph of y equals the square root of x just in its home position. But anyway, when it comes to a function, this, this blue and yellow stuff in the front and at the end controls the vertical motion and shape of the function, while everything in here controls the, the horizontal motion, if you will, and the horizontal part of the shape, the width, for instance, of the graph of the function. So out here, you have the reflection across the x-axis if you have a minus sign there. And this number is the vertical stretch or shrink depending on whether or not it's a fraction. And we'll talk about that specifically later. Over here, You've got the vertical shift. If it's plus a number, then you've got a vertical shift up. If it's minus a number, you've got a vertical, a vertical shift down. And this stuff is very straightforward. And then we get to the inside of the function. The stuff in the parentheses when it's written that way, or if you're dealing with a square root, the stuff underneath the radical. That controls all of the horizontal movement and all of the horizontal part of the shape, like the width. If there's a negative sign in front of the X, then you have a sideways reflection, a horizontal reflection, across the y-axis to the other side, like a mirror image reflection. This number is the horizontal stretch or shrink, but if you remember correctly, well, we'll talk about that later. Right now, it's enough to know that this, this B is your horizontal stretch or shrink depending on whether it's a whole number or a fraction. And this number is the horizontal shift left and right, depending on the sign in front of it. Notice that plus means go to the left and minus means go to the right when it's in the argument of the function. On the other hand, Plus means go up, which is what you'd expect, and minus means go down when you're outside the function. 
on the far right. So before we start working on this, let's talk about A, <clears throat> A and B. A here is a stretch and I'm going to increase the size on this so that we can hone in on A here. If A is a fraction, like one third, well, I don't want that red. Let's make it blue. If A is a fraction, like one third or two thirds, any fraction, and it's in front of the function, then you've got a vertical shrink. Uh, and let me write it smaller. That's why I made this bigger. We'll make it bigger still. So it's easier for me to write small, smallly. Is there such a word as smallly? Two thirds. On the other hand, if that A number is a whole number, all right, if it's an integer, but a whole, a, a, a positive integer, and that's important because the negative sign is considered separately. So if this is a positive integer, the A part, like five, then A is the vertical stretch. Meanwhile, this minus sign, something totally different, that's a reflection across the x-axis, which means upside down. OK. Over here, doesn't matter whether that's a fraction or not. What matters is whether it's being added or subtracted. Looks like it's got blood on it. There. Oh well. So a plus is up and a minus is down, just what you would expect. Which brings us in here. Here a minus sign is a horizontal reflection across the Y axis. The horizontal stretch and shrink, on the other hand, are completely different from A. In here, B is the horizontal stretch or shrink. Yes, okay. It's the horizontal stretch, if believe it or not, it's a fraction. We did learn this before, but we didn't pay really close attention. And this is the horizontal shrink. In other words, it shrinks together horizontally. If this is the whole number right here. It's exactly the opposite from A. There's a reason but you probably won't remember it. So, the important thing is that you remember that. And I'm hoping that this map can help you. Now, that's not the only thing that's backwards here. The horizontal shift is also backwards. Here, a plus sign means go left and a minus sign means go right. 
and we also discussed the reasons for that when we were talking about transformations, but for now, just accept it and memorize it the way it is. So this is our map. All right, so everything is marked pretty well now. And let's go over again what the vertical and horizontal shift do and what the, 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 uh, the vertical, yeah, the reflection across the x-axis, what they do and what the horizontal reflection does. Just, just to help you remember, And the square root is, is very good for showing that. All right, so here is y equals um, the square root of x. I've already got this in there. Here's where it is in y equals. And my window, I wanted to emphasize the graph and make it easier to read. So that's the reason it, it, it looks a little funny. Now, if I were to come back here and put a negative sign, okay, second insert negative. So if I were to do that and then graph, well, you couldn't see it the way I've got my window. So I'm going to zoom six and just give myself back a normal window. All right, this is with the minus sign in front. Notice that this graph is now hanging upside down. That's what the minus sign in front, right there, in front of the function does. So let's get rid of our minus sign. And now, yeah, that's where it is. That's where the graph is when the function is in its home position. Now we're going to put a minus in front of the X. So second insert, not a minus sign, a negative sign. So that's a negative and I graph it, and it goes over there. This graph is slammed over to the other side. Okay. So let's do some homework. The first thing you want to do when you do these is ask yourself, what kind of graph is this? And so you see a square root, and so you'd be entirely correct if you were to say, this is a square root graph. You're categorizing. Okay, then I'm going to go here, go here, and go to basic functions. Here are your basic functions. It will only help you for the entire course if you memorize these. Put them on flashcards. But here's our square root function. That's what you're categorizing this as. Okay, 
So once you know it's a square root function, you know that the basic function is y equals the square root of x. That's your basic function. There's not anything in front of it, but there is up here. This, these are your transformations. They're the only transformation, so there's nothing too, too hard or too scary about this. There's a negative sign. The negative sign is a reflection across the x-axis. So that, that's your first transformation. You might want to know, well, why does it do that? Is it magic? The answer is no. The negative sign is like negative one. And the negative one multiplies every y coordinate in this graph not the x coordinates just the y coordinates the y coordinates of all the points that's how it happens something i didn't write down and I'm going to do it now. So I have to do it in blue. Everything out here in front, this number and that minus sign, everything in front of the basic function multiplies. I need to write it higher. Okay, everything in front of the basic function, that's what I want to say. Everything in front of the basic function. multiplies the y coordinates of all the points. of all the points. And what are the points? They have X coordinates and Y coordinates. So this is what gets multiplied by what's out here. Now, your second transformation is 
is the one third, not negative one third. We've already taken care of that. This is your vertical shrink. Poop. Hey, I'm small. And it is the vertical shrink because this one third multiplies all the co y coordinates of all the points. All the y coordinates. And there aren't any more, um, there aren't any more transformations. There you go. So what is this going to do? This is going to send this down here. And then this is going to make all of the Y coordinates smaller so that the graph will end up being closer to the x-axis like that. So this is where it's going to end up. Okay. badly drawn, but I'm doing the drawing. So, so from this, you're now going to be asked to graph the function, but you don't really need to because they give you four choices. Okay, well, let's look. We know, well, all right, there's only one choice, isn't there? Right here. This is the only one that's hanging upside down. There you go. You don't even need to think about it. Discussion. While I'm here and thinking about it, everything in back that's vertical, yeah, that has its effect because it either adds to or subtracts from every Y coordinate for all the points. Okay, so this adds or subtracts the D number. To all the Y coordinates. Well, adds to all the Y coordinates or subtracts from all the Y coordinates, but I don't want to put two from. Maybe I should. All right, I'll do it. to make this smaller now. Notice 
that it here's f in front of the function and behind the function whatever you've got out there only affects the y coordinates of all the points does absolutely nothing to the x's it's the stuff in here that acts on the x's okay so now i'm i'm done preaching done preaching about the outside of the functions. Ah, but we're still dealing with the outside of the function. Okay, we've got g of x, make it real big equals negative five times the square root of x. And again, you're gonna say, well, what kind of function is this? Well, it's really clearly a square root function. So that's my basic function. You have to be able to identify what the transformations are doing to the basic function. And to do that, you need to know what the basic function is. And so far, you've only got six to choose from. Okay, not really sure if that's still up or not, so I'm not going to worry about it. The, the, the paper with the basic functions. There. Just had to remember what kind of document it was. Yeah, you've only got these six for now. There are more. There are a ton more. But as long as you've got the idea from these six, you'll do pretty good, pretty well. All right, so our basic function is y equals the square root of x. Where this is the argument, the inside of the function, and in front and in back are the y parts of the function. All right, now we've only got stuff in front. So we're just going to be dealing with the y coordinates again. You're going to have, well, yeah, okay. You're going to have a reflection across the x axis because it's vertical. Boom reflection across the x-axis. And then look at this, five is a number greater than one. So you're going to have a vertical stretch. Five is a vertical stretch. Um, okay, so yeah, five is going to multiply all the y coordinates of all the points.
of all the XY points. That's a redundancy, but it helps to remember. Okay, so let's take a look at the graphing calculator. And we can do this. Click on Y equals, and that's where you do your graphing. So uh, we have, well, let's just do the square root of X, the basic graph. Click graph. Now I go back to Y equals and I go down to Y2 and I'm actually going to type in negative 5 square root of X. And look at how this graph is different from that graph. Look at that, not only is it upside down, but it's a lot more vertical. Why? It's not vertical, but it's, it's more. It's because it actually got stretched out. All the Y coordinates first get multiplied by negative one, and then that five kicks in and, and makes them bigger. Just in case you're interested. So we're going to go looking for that down here. That sure looks like it, doesn't it? But let's think it through. This would have been a reflection across the Y axis because the basic graph looks like that. This would have been across the Y axis because the basic graph looks like that. It's not quite that big. Um, not yet. But anyway, so these are out completely. There's no talk about a shift across the Y axis. So it's going to be between this and this. And this, this does stretch it out because the regular graph would look like, let, let me try to draw something more exact. One, two, three, four. Right, that should get me on the right path, although it curves. This would be y equals the square root of x, and this is y equals five times the square root of x. But they forgot something. They forgot to reflect it across the y-axis. So like this would be worth partial credit, but it's not the right answer. This is the right answer right here, where you have a reflection and then you have a stretch down because it's already reflected down. Or you could have reflected it up and then hit it with that negative sign and reflect it across the Y axis. That would give you this. So here's your right answer. This is the full credit and that would be half credit. Now, first you would ask yourself, self, what is, what kind of graph is this? And you would say to yourself, it's a square root graph. So the basic graph is y equals the square root of x. You've got to know that so that you can look at this and you can look at that and say, well, there's nothing out front. And there's nothing behind. So the transformation is going to be 
in here. That's where the argument of the function is. In fact, I'm going to offer this to you. Suppose the basic graph were g of x equals the square root of x. Do you see that there's an x there? And this is where the x goes. Now we're asking, okay, if f of x is this, what did it do to this? If f of x is this, that means it did something to the basic graph. Well, this is the same thing as if you had this. Here's the argument of the function, and for the square root, this is where the argument of the function goes. So the only thing that's going to be affected is the x-coordinates of the points, or are the x-coordinates of the points. Alright, so now we are inside the argument. The argument of the function. Only X coordinates of points will be affected. The Y's are going to be left completely untouched. Affected, yeah. That's an E. Okay. Although, might be A, uh, might be A. Uh. It's a verb, isn't it? To be affected. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. English majors, you go ask your English teacher. I don't care. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, the x coordinates are going to get this. Now, if we go back to the map, when you add or subtract a number right after the x, you know, it's still inside the argument, but it's being added or subtracted to. That's your horizontal shift. And also, the sign being used is the opposite of what you'd expect. It's, it's complicated. So when we've got f of x equals the, the square root of x minus 8, and the only reason I put parentheses around it is to emphasize it's the argument. The only way you can be absolutely sure which way the um, um, the basic function is being moved is if you take the argument and set it equal to zero. X 
x equals po positive 8. Positive means you're going to go right. That negative sign in the argument, that minus sign in the argument, means you're going to take the square root of x and move it to the right. So let's do this. Here's y equals the square root of x, the basic function. Now, because I know that we're going to be moving left or right, I'm going to change x max to 20, just so you'll be able to see. And why, the, why plus 20 and not minus 20? Well, I could do that, but I know that I'm going to get a plus. Let me erase any semblance of a minus there. This is a positive eight. So we're going to be moving to the right, but I don't know that from looking at this, I have to get my answer down there. All right, now I'm going, so here's what I've got now. I'm going to go back to y equals, go down to y2, second x squared, x minus 8 and graph. See it moves over to the right, 8 units. You also know now what the graph's going to look like when you have to choose your graph, if you do. There. Okay. Aha, well, Here's your basic graph right here. It's being shifted to the left. That's wrong. Here's your basic graph. It's being shifted up. That's wrong. Here's your basic graph. It's being shifted down. That's wrong. This is the only one, even if you can't tell exactly what that number is, this is the only one that's being shifted in the correct direction. So this is your answer. So yes. The transformation is a horizontal transformation to the right. To the right eight units. Beware. Beware of anything going on in the argument of a function. You have to slow down. You have to remember it. Maybe even write notes on your paper. Because it's all opposite. Now, here we are back again, and you might even take a, uh, a sigh of relief. No. A sigh of relief. This is where the argument of the square root function is. Ain't got nothing there but the X. Yay. That means this is vertical and this is vertical. Those are easy to deal with and very straightforward. Okay, so 
we don't even have, we're not even shifting over the uh, X axis, not shifting, that's a bad word, reflecting across the X axis. But we do have a number bigger than one. And so this is gonna be a vertical stretch. which means that six is going to multiply all the Y coordinates. And back here, We've got a vertical shift down two units. And that's all there is to that one. Let's see if there's a graph. No, not all of them say to choose a graph, which is kind of nice. I've gotten myself into the, the whole thing of, okay, These guys out on the edges, they're the good guys. But this in here is tricky, dare I say it, shit. Tricky shit, waiting, waiting to trip you up. Me up. I don't like that stuff in there. I like the stuff out there. Mm, getting too much into my own fantasies. It's the phone. Oh, dear. Nope. Guy came to fix my my door. He did a terrific job. Um, yeah, people came and fixed my side door. It was all rotting and nasty. And they did such a terrific job. I'm so happy. All right, so write the equation of the graph after the, oh, this is tricky. They're telling you what the transformation is. You have to write the function. Luckily, they give you choices. Got four choices there. Let's see what this says. The graph of y equals the square root of x, so there's your basic function. Reflected across the y-axis. Okay, this is going to be in the argument because the y-axis is horizontal. You're shifting it horizontally across, all right, and is translated three units to the left. That's in the argument. And up two units, that's not in the argument. That's at the end. So this is where that map comes in handy. You've got the square root of, we know X is under here, right? This is where the argument of the function is. So we've, we're reflecting across the Y axis. 
So a negative sign goes there. And then we're translating three units to the left. OK, left and right are over here. Over here. So. We are going to the left. Under normal circumstances. Yeah, I like what they've done here. That makes it much more understandable. Under normal circumstances, left three units would be written like that. I mean, if it weren't for the fact that inside the argument, plus means go to the left. OK. Now, left and right, those are horizontal movements. That's why I know it's in the argument. Now, but up two units is going to be at the end. Up two units is not a challenge. I just put plus two. That's my choice for what we're going to be dealing with. This is the y-axis reflection. And that plus means we're going to go to the left three units. So let's see. I do believe it's A. Let's see what the other choices are. This would be correct if that were a plus, but it's a minus, so it's taking you down to. And what that shows is you're getting the opposites here mixed up with, and you're, you're saying, okay, it's all opposite. It's not. Plus means go up on the outside of the argument, but on the inside of the argument, plus is how you go left. Um, that, nah, I mean, that would make, make total sense for somebody to write minus three. But it's wrong. Because minus means go right when it's in the argument. So yeah, A is your only answer. What this ends up saying is, Go right and down, go right and up, go left and down, go left and up. Right, I mean correct. Oh. OK, I had a hunch we'd be done early. Tomorrow we're going to go intensely, much more intensely than I ever planned, into inverse functions. So I thought, hey, let's talk about inverse functions as they relate to radical functions, since that's what we're doing here. We'll be left more than enough to do tomorrow. But there was confusion about one to one because we hadn't talked about it. So I said at some point that, well, I mean, I'm only going to choose one to one because we haven't talked about it yet. OK, well, we're going to talk about it now and tomorrow. Let's talk about one to one as it relates to the square root function.
or watch, watch what happens. How I can get back to just a normal screen, 10 by 10 by 10 by 10, um, is to hit the zoom button and then six, and it just snaps you right back. No matter what you've done to your screen, all you have to do is go zoom six and boom, it's back. But let's look at this. I'm going to kind of blow it up a little bit. In fact, I'm going to get my picture. That looks good. Indeed, a great work of art. because you need a picture when you're when you're talking about one to one. There's a very mathematical way to prove something is one to one, but there's also an easy way to prove that a function is one to one. There we go. Well, let's put a little note up here. One to one. So this is going to be true for all functions. And so since we're dealing with all functions tomorrow, or at least the basic ones you know about so far, um, where, yeah, you're going to be dealing with one-to-one -one a lot, so you'll already be familiar with it. This is a function. There's no doubt about that. It definitely passes eek. It passes eek. Flatten it. That's what saving is called when you're dealing with stuff. Okay. PDFs, flatten. Um, this passes the vertical line test, and I always make the vertical line test red, so. Okay, the vertical line, inner, this is the VLT, okay? VLT, VLT. You only have to do it once, really, but I did it four times. You imagine a vertical line. There actually is a little grid here and you can see it. Um, imagine a vertical line going through the graph. These vertical lines each intersect the graph or touch the graph at only one point, right? Boom, only one point. Well, what else would it be, you might say? Well, if you've got something that's clearly not a function, like a sideways parabola. This flunks the vertical line test. Why does it flunk the VLT? Well, because your vertical line touches the graph at more than one point. But here, each line touches the graph at only one point. So this passes the VLT. And it is therefore a function.
We haven't talked about that since the first or second day of, of class. Well, now we're going to talk about something new, and I'm going to make that line blue. If you know you've got a function, and you want to know if it's a very special function, then you're going to apply the horizontal line test. The HLT, the horizontal line test. This is so much easier, I think, than doing the whole math thing. So I don't do the whole math thing. Horizontal line test. You can read about it in the book and do it. That's a good idea. Horizontal line test. Notice that each of these horizontal lines, let me say HLT, 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 you really only have to do it once. Of course, if like way out here, this did a loop de do we'd both be outsmarted, but it doesn't. All right, the horizontal line test. Each of these horizontal lines intersects the graph, that is, touches the graph at only one point. That means it is a one-to-one -one function. And I think we'll just talk about one-to-one. -one. There are functions we know are functions that we love I love, I think, I think, I mean, it's kind of weird to love a function, but my favorite function is not this. I mean, I like it a lot. But I don't love you, baby. I like you. I want to be friends. <sighs> yes, well, we know where that gets us. So let's get rid of this. My favorite function is y equals x squared. It's just so pretty. It's so perfect. It's pretty, it's perfect. It's y equals x squared. Blurry. Should have sharpened it first. I apologize. Oh, it gets better when it's smaller. Um, yeah, it definitely passes the horizontal, the vertical line test. Boom. I mean, we deal with this more than we deal with any other kind of function. Um, passes the vertical line test. This is y equals x squared. My favorite function. Passes the VLT. Smiley face. However, get ready for frowny face sad face. It totally flunks the horizontal line test. 
totally. Boom. Yeah. This horizontal line touches y equals x squared at two points. And I've been told that two is greater than one. Can't happen. So, I mean, it does happen. So, my favorite function, flux, the HLT. Frown, frown, frowny frown, crying, crying. Yeah, been there, done that. So even your favorite function can flunk the horizontal line test and not be one to one. I should take that B out because people are going to read that and she's saying not B one to one. She must really not have taken an English class. I'll leave it. Let people talk. So then comes the question and we'll end it at that. We won't do any real math. We'll just talk about one to one. Then we'll talk about it again tomorrow. Um, why do I care about one-to-one? -one? Why would anybody care? Why care? Why care? This is the symbol for one-to-one. -one. Why care about it? Here's the answer. Because. Let me scroll it up. And here's the big deal. Only one to one functions. can have an inverse function. Yep. Now, something you're going to find out tomorrow, and it's kind of cheating. Mathematicians love to cheat. Well, they love to cheat this way. If, for instance, and I think we're going to do this tomorrow, if, for instance, you only draw the right half of y equals x squared, the part that goes from x equals zero to infinity, for its domain, then it's, it passes the HLT. This half of it, taken by itself, passes the HLT. So now we can 
find the inverse of this if we're really careful. Now, personally, I think it's better to avoid this and say people who go on to calculus can have a blast doing this. But people in college algebra can get really confused when they're just learning about something. So my hope is that we just won't be dealing with special instances like that. I don't plan to, but it could come up. So I'm just telling you, there is a way to kind of sort of cheat a little bit and get an inverse where you really shouldn't have one. And that's by limiting the domain because this is a one-to-one -one function on that limited domain. But that's that's one of those more, more advanced math things. Basically, you would say y equals x squared on its whole domain, right? The whole thing is not one-to-one -one and therefore we can't find an inverse for it. So anyway, that's why people care. Because the only kinds of functions, oh, I should have written that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We've still got, we've still got three, three, three minutes. I'm gonna write it right here. Yeah, you still got a few minutes. Yeah, the only kinds of functions, the only kinds of functions that can have inverse functions are one-to-one -one functions. Did I already say that? I was going to. Oh, because only one-to-one -one functions can have inverses. That's why. That's why we care. And I'm actually going to erase this because I do not want anybody getting all messed up. And that's it for today. So, you get to get out two minutes early. But you can ask questions the way you always can. You can leave or you can stay and ask questions, whatever. And I'll be listening for them. What now? I said have a good day. Yes, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Unless you have questions, you don't have to say bye if you have questions. I don't want beginners getting all messed up. That's the bottom line. Bye-bye.